In this lesson, we will discuss the anchor point and how to animate using this property. Okay, so I want to step away from our main composition here for a moment and create a new composition with a layer that I have imported or a file that I've imported here on the left. So I'm going to be working with this stainedglass.ai file and I just want to create a new composition for it. So I'll go ahead and click this create a new composition button which is another way to create a new composition instead of going up here through the menu and we'll just call this stained glass and these settings are fine the same settings that we use for our main composition so go ahead and say okay and you see that that's going to open up this new composition for us on the timeline and if I want to I can always toggle between my main composition and the stained glass comp now I want to go ahead and grab that stained glass.ai file and drag it over here into the comp. Now it's there but I can't see it right now because the background is the same color as my object. So I can turn this background to a transparent color if I want to toggle over to the transparent look that you're probably used to if you've used Adobe. So that's going to be this little button right there, the toggle transparency grid. So you can go ahead and click that and now we can see our object. So I want to scale this object up just a little bit so it's easier for you to see. And one of the ways to do that, instead of going into that transform menu, is to grab the corner of it and you can just drag. But I also don't want it to become squished in any way. So a way to scale this up proportionally is to hold the shift key. And if I'm holding the shift key and dragging this at the same time, you see that it is maintaining its round shape. So I'm just scaling that up a little bit just so it's a little bit easier for you to see. And now I want to talk about the anchor point property. However, it's a little bit difficult to understand the anchor point property without understanding how the position property works. So let's go ahead and take a look again at our transform menu and our position and anchor point properties right there together. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that you can see this layer. And when I click it, we see that we get these little squares around the outside edge. And then I have this small little crosshair right in the middle of my composition or of my layer. Now I also have that title action safe turned on right now. So I'm going to turn that off just so you're not confused by that. So what we're talking about is this right here, this tiny little crosshair. And what that is, is the anchor point of your layer. Now, if I move my layer, if I just click that and move that back and forth, you see that position property changing. The anchor point is moving with my layer itself. Now, whenever we created that position keyframe animation earlier, you would notice that the layer itself moved along with the anchor point. So let's do that really quickly just so you can see that. I'm going to set a keyframe for the position, move forward a little bit, set another, and then if I scrub this, we see that that anchor point is what moves along that motion path. So that's important to understand if we want to really know how to use our anchor point property the most effectively. So I'm going to undo that animation and a quick way for me to do that without doing control Z is just to click that stopwatch again. And you see that now I don't have those keyframes anymore and keyframes aren't automatically being set anymore by me just simply moving around that object. So now let's talk about the anchor point. If I just come in here and drag that anchor point value, we see that the anchor point is being offset from its original position right in the middle of my layer. So this is pretty interesting if we think about, well, you know, we can animate with the position property or we can animate with the anchor point property and they're going to look exactly the same. So why would we ever want to use the anchor point property? That seems a little bit more confusing. Well, I will tell you that there have been a few times that I have needed to animate with the anchor point property for the position, but it's not as often as I've needed to animate it you, with the rotation property. So let me tell you what I mean by that. I'm going to go ahead and just reset this layer really quickly and come in here 
and if you see me scrubbing this rotation property, you can see how it's rotating directly from the center, which is where that anchor point is. But what if I want my stained glass layer to move in more of a circle? I could go in and try to animate the position where I would tell it I wanted it to go here, 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 and here, and then try to smooth that out to make it look more like a circle. Or an easier way, that I could do that is simply by offsetting my anchor point. So let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna zero that rotation back out. And then let's just drag this over to the side here so that our anchor point is offset from our layer. And now, if I drag that rotation property, you can see that it's still rotating from the anchor point, but because it's been offset, it's now moving in a perfect circle around it. So it doesn't so much look like it's spinning in place, but that it is moving around this center point. So if you can remember when to use this anchor point offset with your animations for rotation, it is going to save you a lot of headache because sometimes this is the simplest uh, solution to a really complex problem that you might be trying to solve with a little bit too much effort. So one other thing I wanna show you about this anchor point is that you can change the anchor point without just using these values. There's an actual tool where you can grab the anchor point itself and move it independently from what you see there as the layer. And that is the pan behind anchor point tool, which is right up there. So if I select that tool and hover over the anchor point itself, I can just grab that anchor point and move it anywhere I want on my composition. So let's say I want to put it right here on the corner of my layer. Now, if I come in and do that rotation, it looks very similar to what we had earlier, but it's just a little bit closer to my layer itself instead of it being so far away. So that gives you just a little bit more of a customizable option. So something that I might do as a workflow is, let's say I wanna turn on this composition's title action safe and I want my layer to animate directly around the center of my whole composition. Now that I've put the anchor point on that corner, I can just grab my selection tool and drag the whole layer and then hover the corner that has that anchor point on it right over those crosshairs. And now if I change this property, we see that it's just rotating right there in the center of my composition. So that can become a really valuable tool and I'm sure that in the future you're gonna find really interesting ways to use that anchor point property to push your animation. So in this lesson we learned how to use the anchor point transform property to change the way we do rotation animations and how we can use it as an alternative to using the position property to move an object.